Okay, so in this movie, let's take a look at basic SAS functionality, like functions, mixins, and variables. So I'm going to start out by launching CodeKit and click Show Window and start a new project. I'm going to click Create a New Compass Project and change the CSS folder from Style Sheets to CSS. I'm going to uncheck the box to include the line comments because I don't need any and yep that's about it I'm going to create the project and I have already selected the Tuts Plus folder so I'm going to click select now CodeKit automatically generated everything that I need so I have my SAS and CSS folders and I also have a config.rb which is a configuration file for uh, compass and if I reload the page you can see that um, a CSS reset has been applied so I don't want to use a, the default CSS reset so I'm going to open sublime text hit KB and I have already touch plus folder open in here I'm going to go into SAS folder and I'm also going to remove the IE and print that as CSS files because I'm not going to use them this time and here we can see that in the screen that SCSS file compass automatically generated the reset file and I don't want that I'm just going to remove it and save the file reload the page here and it should compile but for some reason it doesn't let's see what could be the issue here I'm just going to hit refresh, try this again, for some reason it doesn't compile, I'm just going to do a quick debug here, compile, okay now it did the compile, it just for some reason got stuck, that's why uh, CodeKit is probably in beta still. So I'm just going to move Chrome to the left and Sublime Text to the right. Or actually we should do it in the other way. So I'm going to have the Chrome in the right and close this. Now let's take a look at basic Now let's take a look at basic SAS functionality. Okay, let's look at basic variable functionality now. To define I'm going to start out with just a body tag and saying that the color of the text should be red and I am also going to say that I want the color of the links to be red. There we go, when we save it everything changes to red and I'm just going to open up the CSS file that was compiled and you can see that they both are almost identically the same this one has better uh, spacing. Now if I say that I want my color to be red and I, I can just use this instead of the color red. So if I replace them and save it, it took the red color and it automatically put it in here. And to make sure we can just look at the file and you can see that the color is red. And now if I change the color red in this one place to for example green and save it, it automatically changes to green and if I look at the file, yep, it has put green color in both places. So that's ba basic usage of variables because you can define a variable in one place and use it over and over again. Okay, now that we have basic understanding of variables, I'm just going to delete all of this and save it again. And save it again to reload. Now, let's take a look at mixins. Okay, now to illustrate mixins and functions, I'm going to make a new document and I'm going to say basic HTML. And inside the basic HTML, I'm going to have two boxes one is going to be box number one 
and the other one's going to be box number two. And I'm going to save this. And I'm going to save it inside my Tuts Plus folder. And I'm going to call this box.html. Save it. Return back to my screen.scss file. See, I, I have automatically um, included the screen.css file that is just from the snippet that comes from my text expander. So now let's open up the box.html. And let's say that both of the boxes are going to be 100 pixels wide. Uh, let's just say width 100 pixels and height 100 pixels as well. Uh, and I'm going to float them both to the left. And the width of the body element is going to be, for example, 300 pixels. Again, I for some reason forget to add the width and margin zero out of just to center what we have here. Okay, and we need the color for the divs, so I'm going to say box one background color is going to be gray, and box two is going to have a background color of black. So there we have our two boxes centered in the middle and now we can look at mixins. So let's say that for example I for some reason want to have a border here of 25 pixels, a gray color, no a black color, and it's a solid border. I'm going to use the same border here. And instead of black color, I'm going to have a gray color. So now we have our two boxes looking like this. Okay, so what are mixins? Well, you see here in the box one and box two, we have some kind of pattern and we don't want to repeat ourselves. So I could say at mixin, and I'm going to say that this mixin is called something, and this is how a template of mixin would look like. Now I can take this code in here and paste it in here, and instead of having this in here, I can say at include something. And now I can actually replace this on the bottom as well with the same thing. But now we have both boxes the same, but we wanted to have some kind of differences in between them. So I can say that I, uh, I can, for example, pass in some parameters. So I can say color one and color two and I can replace the gray with color one and I can replace black with color two. So now I can say something what is black and gray and then something what is gray and black. And now if I save it, it automatically changes the one box to, inver to invert colors. So now if I look at the screen.css uh, screen file, you can actually see that it both of those boxes have this uh, code inside them, but they are dynamic. So I can say instead of gray, I want blue. Instead of black here, I want red. So yeah, that's how mixins work. And this, of course, isn't the most useful example but it's just to illustrate how mixins work and later on you'll see much more useful um, ways to use mixins. I'm just going to save this and now let's look at functions.
So functions work really similar to mixins, but instead of returning a whole chunk of text, functions return one value. So for example, if I would say a function at function, and I'm going to call this function also something, I have to add parentheses here, and I'm just going to return let's say I'm going to return variable a plus variable b now I have to define the variables in here so variable a variable b and let's just call it sum instead of something so now I have a function that run that d does the math for me so I'm going to say that I want to get a sum of 170 pixels and 130 pixels. So now if I go to the screen.css file you can see I have 300 pixels and if I change this to 270 pixels I'm going to have 400 pixels in here. So that's basically how functions work. They return only one value instead of returning a code block. Okay, so these were really simple examples about functions and mixins, but it is really important for you to understand that functions return only one value, and when you call a function, you call it by its name. Mixins, on the other hand, return a chunk of text, and you call a mixin with at include. And by the way, at include is only in SCSS syntax because SAS has two different syntaxes as well, but we're going to look at that in a later tutorial. For now, just know that mixins are called by at include and then the name of the mixin and you can also pass in parameters and sometimes you can uh, skip the parameters as well. So now that you know the basics of SAS, let's start actually working on our project.